in and today's topic is keeping you and your family bug free this summer, something that can be quite a challenge if you spend a lot of time in the outdoors. The good news is there's plenty that you can do to hold these pesky bugs at bay and reduce your family's risk of allergic reactions and illnesses such as West Nile virus and Lyme disease. And joining us today is Dr. Scott Ackerman. He is one of the First Coast's leading doctors. He is with us every week to discuss a variety of health topics. And today we're talking about bugs. bugs. <laughs> bugs. I mean, they're out there, you know, and that, that's the thing. So what time or what kind of bugs, should I say, are we going to see this summer? Well, it's been a very mild winter. And because we've had a mild winter, we're going to have a lot of bugs this summer. And the two bugs that we're most concerned about, the ones that transmit diseases, that are vectors for diseases, are the mosquitoes and ticks. So let's talk specifically about mosquitoes. What kind of diseases do mosquitoes carry? They carry lots of diseases, but the one that we see more often in this part of the state is the West Nile virus. Mm -hmm. What you may have heard of it, the West Nile virus is transmitted through an insect bite. And what happens is the mosquitoes uh, bite an uh, a infected bird and then they bite you and they bring, the they bring the virus from the infected bird to you and you get the West Nile virus. Now West Nile virus generally is self-limiting. It generally doesn't have a whole lot of symptoms, but you can have some flu-like symptoms. You can have some nausea, you can have some muscle weakness. And as I said, most of the time there's no symptoms. The 80% of people don't have any symptoms, but those people who are you know, young children, people who are elderly, people with a compromised immune system may not be able to handle these symptoms so well and that they're, they, they may have more severe symptoms because, of their because they're immunocompromised. In fact, in the past six months, St. John's County has been on a mosquito-borne illness advisory because West Nile virus has been identified uh, in St. John's County currently. Yes, we need to be aware of that. And then also the ticks, too. What kind of diseases do ticks carry? Ticks carry uh, primarily Lyme disease is what we're worried about. Lyme disease is transmitted again by the tick from an animal to you. And the animals that carry Lyme disease are deer and mice. So ticks will, will, will bite deer and mice. And then if they uh, bite you, and burrow into your skin, they'll transmit the Lyme disease to you. Now the typical symptom of Lyme disease is a flu-like symptom or some fever, or some chills, and there's a rash right where the tick bites. There's a very, there's a rash that, that is very easily identifiable as related to Lyme disease. It's called the bullseye rash. And this rash has a red spot in the center, and then there's a spot of normal skin around it, and then a red, a, a, a ring around the periphery. That's the, the rash associated with um, Lyme disease. Okay, so let's, you know, heaven forbid that you would, you get either one of these two uh, diseases, Lyme disease or the other. How do you treat it? What, what should you do? Well, Lyme disease is easier to treat because we've identified antibiotics that work excellently for Lyme disease. Certain kinds of penicillins will work uh, at treating Lyme disease. The key is to diagnose it early so it could be treatable because if Lyme disease is left undiagnosed, it can go into the uh, central nervous system and cause seizures and all sorts of problems. So you want to identify it early and treat it with antibiotics. You want to get the tick out. Once you see the tick, pull it out by its head. Use the tweezers to pull it out and make sure you get your antibiotics. Yeah, what about West Nile virus? Well, West Nile virus is a virus okay. and we don't have uh, good treatments for viruses. So West Nile virus usually has to pass through the body on its own. As I said earlier, we're lucky in that most patients don't have any symptoms. Uh, but if someone does have symptoms, we treat those symptoms. And so sometimes patients need to be hospitalized to get IV fluids or to uh, be treated because of fever and pain and that sort of thing. Yeah, so I guess the most important thing is protecting yourself and your family from these pesky bugs. And so how, what's the best way of doing that? Okay, so there's ticks and there's mosquitoes. So yeah. let's talk about each of them separately. For ticks, they're out in the woods. Heavily wooded areas, that's where the ticks are. Even if you have a, a wood pile, in your, in your backyard, they, they're in the wood pile, so that, that area as well. So you want to make sure that if you're in the heavily wooded areas, you use an insect repellent and not a natural repellent, but something with DEET in it. You've heard of DEET, uh -huh. D-E-E-T. That is the best thing for repelling uh, ticks and mosquitoes as well, um, is, is DEET. You also want to check your body and check the bodies of your children to make sure that if they're out in the woods, you can see if there's a tick and then watch that area to see if you get that kind of rash. Um, uh, for mosquitoes, also, insect repellent. Use DEET. Put it, make sure you, you put DEET on your children because they're going to be out playing in the yard and they could get um, um, infected with the West Nile virus um, as well. And also, if, you can, if you're out in the woods, 
you want to wear long sleeves if you can. I know it's hot, yeah. but long sleeves will act as a barrier and protect the ticks from, from, from uh, attacking your skin. They can't crawl up underneath, so you want to make sure you look at your body. Yeah. Also with mosquitoes, get back to mosquitoes, mosquitoes breed in standing water, standing fresh water. So you want to look around your property and make sure there is no fresh water standing. For instance, a lot of people leave a paint can outside or a garbage can outside, and after the rain, in the garbage can, uh, mosquitoes will produce and they only have a short lifetime, they only live a day or two. So they produce very rapidly and you have mosquitoes. One area that, that we forget about is old abandoned tires, tires and yards. They have, they collect water inside, it's a dark environment, it's a perfect environment for breeding of mosquitoes. So look for, the, for that and eliminate those standing water. In addition, you want to make sure that your windows have screens, and your doors have screens because that'll keep the mosquitoes out. Yeah, no, it's little steps here and there you don't think about, but it's so important to protecting your family, obviously, and, you know, worst case scenario, you get one of these things, you need to seek treatment right away. So thank you so much, Dr. Ackerman. We appreciate you being here as always and giving thank us you. your perspective and insight and everything and sponsoring this segment. Dr. Ackerman is with us every Friday. He's going to be uh, back next week talking about breast cancer treatment options for questions regarding this topic or anything that really is on your mind. If you want to know, you can just log on to firstcoastoncology.com. There you can confidentially submit your questions to ask the doctor.